we were working more in the gender equality space and an opportunity space. So the, the branding changed to Fair Break, a little bit of a play on the Australian notion of a fair go. Uh, and uh, we've been working now in that space with that brand for about three or four years and uh, trying to play iconic fixtures around the world like the, the Wormsley game that we play at the Getty Estate in England. Uh, we played four games in England last year. This Bradman game here today is another signature game. It's the first time the Bradman Foundation have fielded a women's 11. And we think by playing those sorts of games we give these players from a variety of countries a little more profile. Um, and also they get to play with some of the great other players around the world. I think it's really important that the, uh, the Bradman Museum have been involved. I actually captained the team in the first ever men's Bradman 11 versus England uh, back, way back in 1990. Um, so I've got a bit of a connection with the place and, and sort of the men's 11 playing here, so uh, to wait, you know, 30 years for a women's game, it's, that takes a, a little bit of working out, particularly when you've got someone like Rena Hoare as the, the boss of the Bradman Museum these days, but, but she's been a driving force behind this as well, which has been terrific. So yeah, really important that the Bradman 11 are represented by a, a women's team as well. For our Fairbreak players to come and play at, a, at an iconic venue is just a great joy for them as well. I mean, they've been really excited about this particular game and look, it's really terrific. We've put on nice, cool weather for them. It has been very satisfying. Um, it has been amazing to be part of this initiative uh, because you get to share knowledge with, uh, with people who really want to improve cricket and they really want to get better at what they do. Uh, and it gives me a lot of satisfaction and happiness that I was able to be a part of this. We're at the Bradman Oval in Barrel. Uh, this is a very special place to me as the first female Bradman scholar um, years ago. Uh, the Bradman Foundation has supported me through my academic journey and my cricketing journey. So it's wonderful to be back here uh, to captain the inaugural Bradman Women's 11 to take on the Fairbreak Global 11. I, I think I've picked a pretty good side. Some young, talented players from mostly around New South Wales uh, who ho have already featured in elite cricket such as the Women's Big Bash League um, and playing underage uh, representative cricket for Australia. So look out. I think we're going to um, give the Fairbreak Global 11 a run for their money. What attracted me was the lack of uh, mentors in my journey. I think when you are from the lower ranked teams or the teams do, that do not have a culture of cricket, uh, women's cricket in their, their part of the world, uh, you tend to improve slowly because there are not a lot of people who are helping you get better. I just wanted to be there for them because I, I know how difficult it is to grow on your own and I see these amazing girls willing to take up this sport and willing to be better. Uh, and make a difference in their own countries and just to be able to ha be of assistance to them, um, it brings me a lot of joy. If people of the calibre of Ale uh, Alex Blackwell, Sana Mir and Jeff Lawson were not involved in this program, uh, it would be much more difficult. Those people give this program a lot of credibility and a lot of gravitas and they're very committed. Uh, to what we do. Uh, speaking from a captain mindset, that's the whole point of cricket. It provides equality and it includes everyone, size, race, gender, whatever it may be. Um, but also when you look at Hong Kong specifically, we're already composed of five different nationalities or six even, or plus ten. So I think Carrie and myself have already been practiced as to how to accept people. Um, it's been a blast. They're a role model to not only women's cricket, but the whole development of cricket, men and women. And to really tick their brains and try and ask questions as to how they think on the field has been so good for me, because I think that's something that I want to try and improve myself, is um, you know, the individualistic and the collectivist culture. It's a balance between the two, um, but learning how to adapt according to a really high-end stake tournament, it, it's really good. I think it makes you fall in love with cricket again, how their struggles, uh, wanting to be uh, part of this community, how they are willing to give up everything and I think you get uh, fall in love with the game again because you get to meet these amazing people from across the world and uh, you just, the passion increases I think. Uh, it has been very enriching for me also. Uh, you get to learn a lot from, from young players so it, was, it, it has been very good for me also. Well, what I've seen so far from, from women cricketers is the, the great joy and passion for the game. So you've got to, if you have that, everything else will fall into place. So as long as you, you've got that, that, that passion and drive to play the game, um, you'll succeed at whatever level. But the opportunities these days, particularly in Australia, for, for young women cricketers is enormous. What we need to do is take those opportunities to other countries because Australia is really a, you know, a place of privilege for all cricketers and 
and as we've seen recently, say the WBBL and the Australian women's team and, and how they're all getting paid, you know, better and better all the time, that we'd love to spread that message. I think if uh, they want to grow this game, then they have to identify that talent is everywhere. It's not in selected environments. And that talent needs funding, it needs support, and it needs exposure. We've got a Cricket World Cup on here at the moment, a Women's World Cup. I think that's wonderful, but I think it's poor that the men's T20 World Cup is 16 teams and the women's is 10. And I think that's a significant problem. I don't agree with arguments along the lines of there aren't 16 quality women's teams in the world. That's immaterial to me. Um, what those other six teams need is exposure and investment um, and support. Cricket is a game for everyone and I'm passionate about ensuring there are no barriers to your success and uh, women from all around the world have an opportunity to experience elite cricket if their skills uh, are presenting that opportunity. Uh, so wonderful to see um, some talented players from Hong Kong, the USA, Vanuatu out here showing their skills. I think as a, as a female cricketer, if we really want to uh, see this uh, game grow globally, we need to give opportunities to the associate nations and the player of the associate nations. The more the teams, the better the teams, it's better for cricket, it's better for viewership, it's better for players to play. And uh, I think that would be great if we can do it uh, on, on a regular basis, inv invite them and help them be better. I think it's going to be great for the game of cricket.